was such an amazing four days of a spiritual retreat, believe or not. And the family, uh, what a gracious people. Um, uh, very appreciative of um, Chaplain Soldier allowing me to be a part of the um, uh, part of the team that had the honor to bring Father Capon back home. It does provide a sense of closure for us to know that his remains have been identified and that they are coming home here to Wichita, Kansas, where he began his ministry. And, and so just as I revere the POWs for bringing his story home from the battlefields and the prison camps of Korea, I revere the people of Pilsen who have carried those stories on and who have done their work to make sure that the rest of the world knows about this great and holy man. And there is a lot of beauty and wonder and awe about the people of Pilsen and their contribution to the overall story of Father Capon. They helped make him who he was and now they carry that story on so that the rest of us can understand who he was. And Father Capon was associate pastor, and I just thought he was the kindest, most gentle man. He was pedal his bike in from out in the country, and he was just great. At the same time, Father Capon, as a priest, loved to serve at the Harrington uh, Army Base. And so during World War II, he asked his bishop at the time for permission to enter the army chaplaincy. And he served in World War II in Burma and in India. And then after that, he returned back to Kansas and was once again assigned to his home parish in Pilsen. And so when the Korean War broke out, he once again asked for permission to serve in the army chaplaincy. And this is where Chaplain Capone's heroism really steps in. 125,000 communists from the People's Liberation Army slipped across the border and they're planning an attack. And the 8th Cavalry Regiment found themselves as a northernmost unit of the United Nations line. Because of the nature of the attack, there was a number of casualties that were inside the command post. Chaplain Capone himself helped, you know, through, through risk of his own life, helped a number of soldiers back to safety and was treating those soldiers. About 200 soldiers who were left inside the battalion were able to mount a, a breakout uh, to try to get to safety, but this left a considerable number of soldiers behind. Chaplain Capon volunteered to stay behind. Even though he was able-bodied, he stayed behind with those soldiers to make sure that they received the care that they deserved and also to mediate whatever kind of surrender might have happened with the Chinese. And then about May of 1951, he died of pneumonia in captivity. To me, that was, that was probably the most striking of all of Chaplain Capon's heroism is that he knew he was going to be a target and yet he continued to do the service of a chaplain anyway, despite everything that he had to lose. And for since May of 1951 up until March of this year, that's where the story ended until his remains were repatriated. I think the overall culture of Kansas is one that incorporates hard work, farming, cultivating, and community. And Father Capon means all of these to us. And from humble beginnings to a saintly, divine eternity is what all of us should strive for. And Father Capon's example gives us that pathway. And he does that through acts of service, of love and through the instilling of hope in all of us, which is so critical in today's society.